Good morning, everybody. My name is Benoît Kenodon. I work at Saibo's uh, company based in Japan. And so I'll be uh, talking to you about uh, the model view intent architecture, or uh, as I see it. Uh, there will be a lot of uh, Rx Java stuff, uh, some Kotlin, but it doesn't really matter if you know it or not. It's more about the, the purpose of uh, what it's doing. And so I'll be explaining uh, what it does. So uh, let's imagine we're having a conversation. I speak. Uh, you listen to me. You think about what I said and reply back. And then what you said is uh, what I will be listening to. I think about this and reply back. And we have this kind of a, a cycle. When my output becomes your input, and your replies is uh, your input, your output, and it becomes my input. And so when we uh, when we talk with a machine, it's like the same. When we click on a mouse, scroll, uh, even speak, anything, it's our output, and that becomes the machine input. And what the computer does, even uh, playing sound, showing stuff on the screen, it becomes our input. And it's like this uh, basic uh, cycle. It's basically what is uh, the human computer interface. And so the MVI architecture is a proposal to organize the code between the UI and the pr presenter of your model using uh, this. Uh, pattern. So it looks like this. The user is us, so uh, getting something from the screen, then uh, pushing something to the computer. Intent is just listening to the user. Model uh, represents the kind of the business logic of the machine thinking about what we just said. And view is just uh, rendering stuff back to us. And so there is a few things that I think are really different from other uh, architecture. First, the UI is separated between two. Usually when, uh, I don't know, MVP, you would have the view that would be rendering and listening at the same time. But here it's really separated. And we'll see later why it's uh, a good thing. And also there is the user in the architecture. Usually uh, it's not here. And also, uh, not only the name, but every component uh, is uh, written as a function, meaning Every uh, component of the cycle is a basic function which output becomes the next function input. What I mean is the user uh, produces a result that will be passed to the intent, then uh, to the model, to the view, and finally back to the user, and uh, we go on like this. We won't be coding any user today, so uh, we can show it like this. So uh, today we'll be uh, coding the screen. It's uh, the to-do blueprint sample app uh, Google is making uh, on GitHub, with ha uh, which has many uh, architecture, MVP, MVVM. And now I'm actually making the MVI. And uh, so it's a basic uh, to-do list. There is uh, tasks. You can uh, complete them, active them, filter them. And so uh, we'll see what we can do. And our architecture at the moment is only this. We didn't write anything, so there is the user at the bottom listening, and uh, which will uh, click, scroll, anything. And so what we'll do, we'll use a silk class, and we'll modelize every action the user can actually uh, make on the screen. And so first, when the user opens the app, opens the screen, this is in itself an intent. So we'll call it uh, an initial intent. And because we don't need to, um, to pass it any data, we just make it an object, which is a singleton in uh, Kotlin. Then uh, you can see at the top there is a swipe refresh layout. So uh, when the user refresh, uh, this is an intent as well. So we'll create the refresh intent. Then you can uh, check the task or uncheck it. That will make it complete or active. So we'll take one intent for each. And here uh, we need data. We need to know which task uh, has been uh, checked. So we just pass it to a data class. Then uh, the, at the top, there is the menu uh, clear completed. So we just clear uh, all completed tasks. We don't need any data, so we make it an object. Then uh, there is the filter. We only show uh, the completed, the active, or uh, any task. And here, we need to pass the filter to the data class. And so here, with uh, six classes, we have everything the user can actually do on the screen, except navigation. Navigation is. Um, just out of the scope. Uh, if I have time at the end, I will speak about this a bit. And then, so uh, from 
directly from the UI, not in the presenter, directly at the source. We just we just um, emitting intents through an observable. So first, the initial intent is just on creation. We uh, just one even intent using the initial intent. Then we'll merge with uh, all the other intents. For the refresh intent here, we're using uh, Rx binding, just transforming a click, a click listener into an observable or click. We map it to create the refresh intent. And then we'll do the same with all the other uh, intents, just listening to clicks, uh, uh, wrapping it in our uh, intent class. And so that will be the output of the fragment. So we're here. The purple uh, represent uh, a logic, a function. And the, the yellow is just an immutable object. So one object uh, going through the stream. So now we have our intent. And <coughs> for instance, when we opened the app, there was an in initial intent. And it doesn't really mean anything to the business logic. It could be, uh, depending on your task, it can be anything. And so because we don't want the, um, our business logic need, uh, needing to understand the UI, we'd like to. Uh, decoupled both. And so here we'll, uh, we'll kind of translate the intent to uh, an observable of action. And to do this, it's a basic uh, when statement. And because we are using um, a silk class for the intent, uh, we can use the when statement, as I said. And you don't need uh, else. And for instance, if you add a functionality, there is a new intent. And if you forget to uh, to code anything here, there will be a, compil a compilation error, so uh, everything is good. Then, uh, so we take an intent and returns an action. The initial intent is basically load and filter the task, and we pass it a default filter. Refresh intent, we just load the tasks. Activate is the same, and we pass it the, the task from the intent to the action. And you can see intent is uh, highlighted in green. It means Kotlin had a... Um, just did some smart cast. In Java, we would need to cast the intent to uh, an activate task intent and pass it to the action. Kotlin is really nice here. We just uh, we don't need to care about this. Complete task is the same. We pass it. Clear completed uh, is the same. And change filter is the same as the initial intent. Load and filter task. And here we pass the selected filter. And so that's it. Now from six class, we get five. And so uh, even if it's a really a subtle difference. We can see how the uh, the, the decoupling was a good thing because uh, it means we can reuse one action from multiple intent. And now uh, we don't know anything about the the UI actually. What uh, what part of the UI triggered which action? Uh, we cannot see here, so uh, it's a good thing. So we have our action, and now uh, we can go inside the business logic to process uh, the data we need. And so in the action observable, there is the load task, uh, load and filter, uh, activate anything. And because we want to keep the business logic isolated per action, we'd like to split the, the stream. And for each type of action, we just uh, call the correct isolated business logic, and then merge everything back. To do this, uh, we'll use an observable transformer that we take an action and return a result. To do the splitting, there is a, the publish method, which uh, you can pass a function to it. And the observable will be the, the parameter. And inside this publish uh, method, you can do anything you want with the observable, as long as at the end you just return one observable. That's why we use the, um, the merge uh, function. And so inside of it, we just check the class of the action its type, and then just pass it to the correct uh, business logic. So the load task action will be composed to the load task processor, and just the same for uh, every kind of action. So we'll only see uh, one processor. The load task processor will be uh, taking, sorry, taking uh, a, task a load task action and return a load task result. So we do a switch map. And we call the repository to get our task, which, uh, which will return an observable of list of tasks. Then here, and not before, we say uh, inside the stream, we send an event saying, hey, I'm doing stuff in the background. I'm loading stuff. Uh, so we just have a, a singleton object that we uh, emit into the stream. When the data uh, correctly returned, we map it to wrap it in a success object. 
So uh, it's basically just the list of the tasks. And when an uh, error hap uh, happen, you don't want to raise anything. The error is just part, it's just data that you want to pass into the stream. So the UI could just, uh, I don't know, show the error, or you can do anything you want. And because, uh, I don't know, it can be database or the network, but you're doing uh, stuff on the background. So subscribe on uh, IO and observe on um, the main thread. There is a small optimization we can do here because the in-flight object doesn't need to run in the background. And even, even if it just um, comes back uh, right to the main thread, because it's above the observe on, um, observe on main thread, it will be um, emitted in the next frame. So uh, depending on what you're doing, it can uh, the user can see it at a, a small jank on the UI. So you can just uh, move it below the observer on, uh, the observer on, and it won't change uh, any logic. It just it will be emitted right away in the main thread uh, in the main thread. So uh, no problem. And so we do the same uh, for each uh, processor, which the specific logic emitting uh, specif uh, specific event when we are doing a asynchronous task, uh, anything we want. So from intent, uh, we get action. And from the action, we get the result. So uh, as we saw, the log task result, even if it's the in-flight success or uh, error uh, wrapper, is not enough to render a screen because it's really specific to the load task uh, ac action. So what we want is a class that will be sufficient to render any screen we want. And that's what uh, we, we will be calling the view, the view state. So the view state, uh, there was the swipe refresh. So we would need a Boolean to just control its state. Then. Uh, We'll uh, handle the filter so we can change maybe the label of the, of the screen. We'll have the list of the tasks so we can display them. We need to hold the error so we can show the, some message. And then uh, we'll have three Booleans that would be kind of a, a switch, uh, kind of switches, which mean if I complete a task, the task complete will be true. And when true, then I show a, st a snack bar saying the task is complete. And it will be the same when activity or when I cleared everything. When it's false, I just uh, don't do anything. And that's it. With this, I should be able to render any screen, uh, any screen I, want, I want. And uh, so before the user even emitted the initial intent, we need to have our default state. What's the, re the, the default state? And so we'll just create one uh, using a companion object. So no loading, uh, the filter is default, no task, and everything. And so uh, in, in, this, uh, in the stream, we get result. And we need, from this result, to update the state to get the, a new state that will be uh, rendered on the screen. And so this is uh, usually what is called a reducer. And so uh, we take the default state, we have uh, our result, and we just update the part that is concerned, and we don't touch anything else. So if it was the load task, uh, in flight object, it just means we are loading. So in the view state, we would change loading to true, and that's it. Then we will create an, uh, a new state from this and emit it into the stream. But because each time a result uh, arrives into the stream, we need to update the now uh, previous state. We need to cache it somehow. And so uh, to do this in our XJava, we can use scan. And you pass it a default value and the reducer. The reducer is a by function taking a view state, so the previous view state, and a result, and just returning uh, a new view state. So uh, as well as intent and action, result is also a sealed class, which has uh, every kind of uh, possible result. We just uh, when match it. So because of this, we have the smart cast, as I said earlier. Then uh, we can check the result if it's in flight, success, or uh, failure. If it's in flight, we just take the previous state, only change loading to true, and return it. If it's a failure, we're not loading anymore. We store the error, and we return. Uh, on success, we just store the, the list, and we are not loading anymore. And it's the same for the other uh, result, just updating what we want. If it was like an activate task, we would say, uh, I don't know, maybe not loading, or if, if it was a synchronous, you just said, uh, task activate true, and that's it. And now that we have our state, 
and it's sufficient uh, to render any screen, we should uh, just render it. And it's basically the, uh, the last step of the cycle. So we take the state and render it. So the rendering is really, uh, we don't need to think much. We match the is loading state to the swipe uh, refresh layout. If there is an error, we show it uh, somehow and then return. About the snack bar switches, if um, any one of them are true, we just show the corresponding snack, snack bar. Then we check the, the list. If it's empty, we show an empty view and uh, the corresponding label uh, matched to the filter. Then if there is data, we pass it to the adapter, uh, hide the empty view and change the label based on the filter. And so uh, the render function is like this. It can get uh, a bit long, but that, uh, that's the only place that should uh, write the view. That's the only place that should change something on the view. So uh, if anything goes wrong, you know where to look. And so uh, the loop is closed. We have our uh, cycle. But we are all on Android, and so there are some specific things we need to consider. So uh, side effect. So it's not the correct uh, uh, definition, but what, what I mean by side effect is if you read or write something that is not the parameter of your function. So when, uh, of course, we need side effect, otherwise a, com uh, a program would just be a black box, no input, no, uh, no output, it's, it would be meaningless. So in the intent uh, logic, we listen to the user. That's uh, a kind of a side effect because we we are reading the view. The user checked the task. Uh, we are listening to the click. We get the actual uh, check task, pass it to the intent. But we are not writing anything. This is not some, uh, somewhere where you, uh, I don't know, if the user uh, swipe refresh, you would not do loading equal true, then do your async task. That's not uh, where it should be. So only reading the view, and that's it. In the processor, you do business logic, so it's, uh, you do whatever you want. But at the same time, the side effects are uh, restrained to the green area. The processor should not talk to the view saying, oh, um, I'm activating this task, uh, what's its current status, or anything. You, you cannot and should not do this. And in the rendering, uh, even if it's uh, in the UI as the intent, we do not read the view, we only write it. We have the view state, and from it, we should write the view, and that's it. And so on Android, um, physically, we have the input and the output at the same uh, place, right? Because everything is on the screen. Uh, even uh, the code, everything is uh, either a fragment or an activity. But uh, if it was a computer, the keyboard and the screen are not uh, together. The program is not at the same place, and so there is meaning uh, separating both. And so uh, whatever you render, it should not trigger an intent. Uh, whatever you uh, whatever the intent, it should not write the view uh, anyway. And everything else is, uh, no, um, there is no side effect. Basically, pure functions, um, so easy to test, and you don't need to worry about uh, thread and everything. And so if the processor want ne uh, wanted to talk to any other component, the only way he could would be to pass a new in, uh, event into the stream, and uh, go the same for everything. There is only one way the data can uh, run through the stream, and that's basically what's uh, called um, unidirectional data flow, and uh, that's it. Now, how would we uh, actually code it? So, we want less code as possible in the activity of the fragment or anything uh, Android, Android related because it's hard to test and we want to be uh, able to test anything on the JVM. So only the rendering and the intent uh, listening should be in your uh, fragment or activity. And then you go into uh, a view model. The, the name is not really important. It's just your, uh, there is no Android. And so uh, there is the UI and the view model and basically they can only communicate through those uh, two entries. The UI renders a state, it's, its input taken from the view model states, which is the view model output. And the other way, uh, the UI emits intent that it's the only entry point through the view model. So uh, let's say the user is uh, using our app 
everything uh, goes fine, we render the first screen, and then the user uh, do three tasks in a row, maybe the network is slow, uh, we're not rendering anything yet. And then uh, mom gives a call, so what happens? Uh, we stop. So uh, the user was uh, doing three tasks, we didn't have time to render. So what will happen to those uh, ongoing tasks in the meanwhile? And uh, is everything lost? Uh, that's something uh, we'll see. So uh, let's say at this right moment, uh, the user take the call, so the UI uh, is on stop. We are not listening, we are not emitting, but the view model is still alive and it's still running. So uh, what happens? B is emitted, nobody's listening, so it uh, kind of a, a wasted uh, emission, but the reducer using the scan me uh, method is caching the latest uh, view state. So we still have, uh, have it. Then let's say uh, C come back, it, re it get uh, reduced with the latest uh, C state, uh, B state that now is cached uh, as a latest state. It was emitted, nobody was uh, listening, so it's a, uh, a waste. Then A come back, uh, comes back is the same. We emitted three view states, nobody listened, uh, listened to it, but we cached the latest up, uh, up to date state. So when the user come back, we just emit the last state, and then the user just get the screen, uh, everything is up to date, no problem. So how does it, uh, can, we di can we use it for config change? Because it's also something really um, tricky. So uh, basically we'll be using the, the view model ID uh, of the architecture component, meaning even if the activity uh, rotate and that the, the activity is destroyed or recreated, the view model just stays uh, alive. There is no new instance, there is nothing, as long as the activity uh, it's just rota uh, rotated. Once it's totally done, the view model dies and uh, we don't care anymore. And uh, there is a problem. So uh, everything goes from the intent to uh, the render, meaning the intent is the source and the render is the subscriber. So when we the activity is destroyed, the user interface, the source disappears, meaning the stream uh, completes and everything dies. So if we had ongoing task, it's gone. The latest uh, cached uh, view state is gone. And so we, uh, what we can do is put a proxy inside a view model that will uh, just forward everything from the source, from the intents, to the stream. So even if the source disappears, uh, the proxy will stop the completion and keep uh, the stream alive. But because the UI uh, actually disappears totally, the subscriber as well uh, goes away. So uh, in the other way, the stream is destroyed, no cached uh, view state, and no uh, ongoing action. We do the same, we put a proxy uh, in the other way. So when one goes out, uh, the proxy stop the completion, and uh, everything's fine. So even if the activity is destroyed, the view model, uh, the stream inside the view model is still alive, ongoing tasks are still going, and uh, the latest cached state is still here. And so when the UI comes back, we just need to bind, uh, to bind back and everything's fine. How we would uh, code it? Inside the view model, so we create the proxy for the intents, it's a basic subject, and uh, so pr uh, process intents is coming from the UI, so we just subscribe to, to it, meaning we just forward every intent we get inside the intents subject. We create the, uh, the proxy for the states, and it's basically what we just uh, return as a view model. Now, when the view model is uh, created, we have the logic we, uh, so we had earlier, and uh, at this very step, we already subscribe to it using our uh, proxy uh, state subject. Which means, even if the UI is not listening, you do a new task view model, the stream is created and is alive. And as long as the view model uh, is uh, referenced, as long as it's not uh, garbage collected or destroyed anything, everything going from those two proxies are uh, well. And so the fragments, uh, the fragment, sorry. You just, uh, so you create your view model. Then uh, on start, you will just subscribe to the state of your model, or the view model and uh, render any states you get. 
because the activity of fragment has a shorter life cycle than a view model, you don't want to do any memory leaks, so you manage it in a composite disposable. And then you pass all the intents you have to the view model. That's basically the binding of the two entries. And then on stop, you don't forget to uh, dispose uh, all the subscription you have. And uh, on start, the, the order of first listening, then emitting is important. Otherwise, if you start emitting before listening, there is a chance an emitted view state would be just uh, wasted because you didn't have time to uh, listen to it. And, to and so uh, that's it. There is another problem, though. So in our uh, UI intents, there was the initial intent that was uh, interpreted as a load task, a load and filter task action. When there is a rotation, the fragment is uh, newly created, meaning there, is, there will be a new initial intent going through the stream. But because everything is in the view model, we don't want to load and filter the task again, right? So uh, the solution I came up with, it's not really uh, Anyway, I'm not proud of it, but anyway, I use the scan, uh, another scan. And this one is a bit different from the one uh, below because it doesn't have a default uh, value passed to it. There is only the reducer. And this reducer takes uh, two intents and, ret and return an intent. And so because there is no uh, default value, it can only be run when there is at least two values, meaning um, the, first, the very first time we open the app, the first initial intent uh, doesn't go inside this uh, scan because it's the only value there is. Meaning, if I'm in this uh, initial intent filter and there is an initial intent, it is a rotation, just a rebinding. So I can uh, like uh, translate this new intent to get last state intent that uh, we created uh, in the meanwhile. And if it's not an initial intent, we just uh, pass it as it is. And then that's it. You can do any rotation you want, ongoing task or well. Uh, latest, uh, latest cached state is fine. And uh, no problem. So, uh, sorry, let me. There was um, uh, another conference when uh, people were reviewing an app. And one of the guys said, oh, set it on uh, uh, airplane mode and rotate the screen. Every, everybody was laughing, but using this architecture, we all find because we, we will just be showing the latest state without uh, even needing to call the database network anything. So uh, test is actually also really uh, simple. Uh, we get rid of the view model, and we just need to pass a state to the UI because it's the only entry, entry point, actually. So we create a subject and pass state uh, to the rendering function. And then using Espresso, you can test oh, from this state, uh, I don't know, the swipe refresh should be loading, this view should be uh, displayed. And uh, separately, the other way around, if you want to, to test the right connection between the buttons or actions, uh, the buttons of the UI and the intent uh, function, you just need a test observer, test uh, and, es and using Espresso, you click on a button, I should get this intent, and basically uh, that's it. And that's the only test we need to run uh, using Espresso. The other way, there is no UI, we just need uh, to pass intent to the stream and then to listen what uh, state uh, has been emitted, right? So using a subject, we can emit any intent we want, and at the other end, uh, okay, that's the, the state I should get. Uh, I don't know, if you do a load task subject uh, intent, you take your state and you just check that loading is true, for instance. And so that's the end-to-end -end really uh, like big test. You can do also uh, the register and the intent interpreter were uh, pure functions, meaning no side effect and uh, idempotent. So you only need you nothing at all. You just pass an input, see the output. If it's correct, uh, good. And otherwise, there is a problem, but uh, easy to test. And uh, sorry, as before, um, this one as well run on the JVM. We don't need uh, Android at all. Uh, this one as well. And lastly, so the processor was a, a mix of uh, every isolated uh, logic, right? You just need to, uh, for each, you can do separated uh, tests with a subject and a test observer. 
And so uh, the blueprint sample I'm actually coding with uh, someone else is uh, here. Uh, it's not done yet, and it's in Java, so it's a, a big mess actually. But uh, if you want to check it out, uh, please do. And so, um, what's not uh, so good about this architecture? So first, uh, I think there is a lot of boilerplate, uh, like creating a class for each intent, each action, uh, each result. Uh, you have you can have a really big uh, reducer and having to create a task every time, especially in Java, is uh, really a pain in the ass. In Kotlin, it's one-liners, so it's uh, either an object or a data class. And then uh, casting also is really bad in uh, Java because you would do a, a switch statement, which type of intent it is, then you need to cast it to an action and it's a big mess, but as well, uh, Kotlin do the smart casting stuff and uh, it's a blessing. As well, uh, navigation, it's, uh, I ask uh, other developers what they think about this, and it's always a tricky subject. Do you pass the navigation uh, inside the stream to do the navigation to the rendering? Or because it doesn't affect the state, do you always um, navigate from the beginning? It's um, something uh, I think needs to be figured out. And uh, of course, there is a lot of uh, Rx Java, so if you're not using it, it's a bit uh, trickier to uh, implement. But I think it's still uh, possible because the main idea is just to have an object that you pass to the next component and from the view state, that should be the only place when you render anything on the screen. And using this, actually it's really simple because uh, every part of the stream has its own um, purpose. So if anything goes wrong, you know where to look. And I don't know, to add a new functionality, it's just basically a new intent, a new action, a new um, business, uh, processor. Then you just update the reducer for the view state, and then uh, it's OK. There is no conflict between, uh, I don't know, some other method did a set the loading to true, so my, uh, my screen is messed up, stuff like this. Everything is really uh, separated and easy to maintain and I think, uh, think about. And so uh, that's it. Thank you very much.